Uh, good morning, everybody. So it is September 1st. Man, where the hell did August go? Like August just flew in and it's gone. God, when you get older, time just flies, man. I remember back when I went to school, it seemed like a week took forever, you know. And the school year took forever. And summer lasted forever. Not anymore. Hell no. Nah. Shit just fly by. You know, it's like the time schedule is pay rent to the next pay rent to the next pay. Yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm... But the weather this morning is beautiful. And for everybody wondering, yeah, we did... Uh, we didn't get hit with a hurricane. It was just a little tropical storm and uh, it didn't even blow my lawn chairs over, guys. We had a shit ton of rain, but hard rain, but that's like, that's all. A little bit of wind, it wasn't even nothing. Like I said, it didn't blow none of my lawn chairs over. I don't have a coffee this morning, so I don't know what to do with my hands. But yeah. On my last video, well, the video for last, last video, I threw up a couple demo clips for you guys after the front port work, which uh, I didn't add much into the front port work video because, um, you know, I, I built the front port and it was just haphazardly at best held in there. And that was for testing. But after the testing proved to be successful, then the following Monday, you know, I went in and glued everything and Craig jig, put it in better, made the bracing. But I went ahead and like edited that video or started editing it. And then later that evening, me and the wife went out to actually play some music in it and do some better testing. The high note, it's got a good high note now, uh, which it didn't have before. But somebody in my port video, when I was explaining reasons why somebody would invert subwoofers, I had a comment. It's like the only reason to invert subwoofers is for more airspace in the enclosure. No, no. Some people invert them just because they look better. That's a reason. Showing off the booty. Uh, and as I said, you know, you get a little better cooling, I think. But you can just like reach behind you and feel the motor, tell how hot they're getting, or that coil is right there if you want to point a heat gun at it and get a good uh, temp reading. Theoretically, when I designed the enclosure, I designed that enclosure with the airspace for the subs inverted. I designed this enclosure for motors in, which, you know, you got to take the airspace and subwoofer displacement all into effect when you do that you know so which i always build for 15s right at three cubes you know 15s love three cubes so by me flipping the motor in they're about 2.8 2.9 each now which is perfectly fine uh bobby mansfield said that's where he likes to to run his at anyway so you know I know that you're going to be good in that 2.75 to like three and a quarter for a 15 anyway. So, but yeah, there's a few reasons people would invert their subs. Me, I do like the way it looks. I'm not even going to lie. But let's talk about something else. <laughs> First thing I, I saw a post in, uh, I don't even I don't even like mentioning this group, but it happens. Base heads on a budget. Where somebody asks if a 130's loud. And I just seen people making the rudest, shittiest comments, you know. Obviously, if somebody's asking if 130's loud, they're new to the base scene, guys. They're new. Why be a douchebag to them? You know, why not uplift them and you know give them a little bit of positivity to keep them in the game you know uh we already seen people that had a shitty system one year and the following year they're giving out nasty demos uh 
and they, they've progressed that far. So why why drag somebody? Um, and I left a comment in there. You know, I'm like, hey, if the equipment that you got that's making a 130, if that's what you can afford, it's perfectly fine. It's loud for you, you know. If you got kids, can't afford anything better. Uh, what ha whatever reason you're doing the 130, it's perfectly acceptable, guys. It is, you know. A lot of people can't afford to spend the time and money that, that some others can to get like, you know, 160, 165 dB demo builds, you know, whatever. It don't matter. Why Why? Did, why is everybody got to hate on everybody is the whole point. That's not how you keep somebody in the base head community. That's the way I see it anyway. I don't care. You know, whatever, whatever you can afford run with it be happy with it you know if you're a bass head and you're you're really getting hooked on bass it don't matter right now because as soon as you get hooked you're going to be looking to upgrade you're going to be looking for ways to get louder so run with it that's my whole view run with it guys uh there's just too much like hate in the car audio world like personally i'm not a scar fan but I'm not going to diss on somebody and drag them for running Scar. And at the same time, you know, there's a lot of big brands that I like. I respect them. I'm a fan of them, but I just don't see me running them. I like being that underdog that runs the, the kind of oddball stuff. That just appeals to me for some reason. Everybody's like, you'd get louder at sundown. You're damn right I probably would. I'd probably get a lot louder, a lot windier. This is my problem with sundown. I love Jacob. Jacob's a great guy, you know. But I can't afford sundown. It's just, it, it, that's the way it is. Uh, I love them DB Drive G7 builds that, or G7 subs that I have for the wife's Rogue that I put in the uh, Edge. I love them. B subs. Can't afford them, though. So, it is what it is. Def bonds. I'd love. I'd probably like to run Def bond. I can't afford it. So, at the end of the day, run what you can. Be happy with it. Be proud of it. And another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, for the people that don't understand how they work, the smart amps, guys. <laughs> these things. I know they're tar amps, and I, I ran tar amps forever, and I loved them. Uh, I love the Korean amplifiers more, but then, you know, they throw out the smart amps and I'm just like, holy crap. Uh, like Steven Alexander was beside me at the sundown show. He's got two smart 5Ks on 418s. He was giving nasty demos all day and uh, them smart amps, you'd look back here and be like, he's only got 10K, that's crazy. Them smart amps are making way more than 5K. I've seen a guy with an AMM1 hooked up on real-time power, and the thing was stupid. I mean, he was fluctuating on music between like 7 and 9K the whole time he was playing out of a smart 5. 7 to 9K playing music. And the reason being is like with a normal Korean amplifier, the ohm rise comes into effect. You know, your impedance rise, your ohms. And even if he had an 8K, you'd be dipping down to around like two to 3K constantly. But the smart technology amplifiers, they fight the ohm rise. The way they're designed is they, whatever the ohm rise is reading, they're gonna put out like a, a way higher. They, they just battle it. I don't exactly know how it works. I mean, I know what it is, but not exactly like all the technical shit. They just, they're crazy. So yeah, he was probably making way more power out of each amp than 5K demoing. And I, I think they're kind of amazing. I think it's the future of car audio. You know, a lot of people hate on the full bridge amplifiers when we all know that like JL Audio has been doing it for years. Uh, they just didn't really blast it in your face that it was full bridge. That really didn't start until like tar amps got mainstream. 
but as the uh, own fighting technology, like the smart technology, yeah, car audio, com or, well, certain amplifier companies have been doing that. I think Rockford, they had amps that did it back in the day. JL, I'm sure. So it, it's a technology that's been around a while, but tar amps is kind of making it mainstream. It's like when the guys are like, oh, full bridge amplifiers don't have the sound quality. JL's been doing it for years. So yeah, moving forward in car audio, I really think that one, the uh, full bridge technology is gonna kind of take over. Not anytime in the immediate future, but I think in the future that's gonna take over just because smaller amplifiers, more power. And we already know that the sound quality is there with them. I mean, Bear Vids did the video of the big JL amplifier, that's, or JBL, that's sound quality uh, versus a Tar Amps Base 15K, I believe. And he made a switch where he could go back and forth while he was playing from one amp to the other. And the majority of the time for sound quality, people pick the Tar Amps. So they're, they're not dirty. Uh, sound quality like i said they've been doing it forever jl rockford but the smart technology i believe is going to be the future because i have actually in in jangalang i actually put my amm1 on the back after i had clamped like way over 8k out of one of my 8ks on burps i just kept burping different frequencies you know seeing where my rise was and the power the amp was making and after like getting, you know, I barely got to like that one ohm range. I, I, may, I mainly stayed like over two, but I think I got 11K at one point at two ohm. And you're thinking like, my God, that's a lot of power. And it is. But then out of the same amp that I was clamping, I went and did uh, real time power on my AMM1. Had to wife film it, you know. And I played a demo track, one that I demoed to a lot, and I barely got 3K. <laughs> barely got 3,000 watts at a peak power, you know, of that run on real-time power. So when I've seen an AMM1 hooked up to a damn Smart 5, and it was staying between 7 and 9, you know, think about it, guys. You could do a build and take a bunch of 8Ks out and put a bunch of Smart 5s in, and I guarantee you're gonna be way louder. So, at the end of the day, it is what it is, you know. But, that's really all I got this morning. Like I said, the hurricane hit, we're fine. Me and Deb did good. Uh, every, every time they announce hurricanes here, I'm just like, whatever, because I know what they do. They start blasting it on the news two weeks before the hurricane shows the hit just so people won't vacation here just so we don't make any money that's <laughs> what it turned into but this video is getting long i'm dragging on i don't have my coffee so i'm over here twiddling with the you know whatever but yeah i just wanted to bullshit a little bit this morning since it's the first of the month thank you all for watching my videos please like if you learn anything at all from them uh i have a patreon if you want to help support the channel or shop it down for sound with my affiliate code. That always helps me. Uh, yeah. Like, subscribe, what the hell ever. Uh, yeah, however you want to do it. I don't care. <laughs> I do care, but I don't want to be one of them people. It's like in every damn video, it's like telling you to like and subscribe. I'm almost at 13K though. So that's big for me, you know. As long as y'all watch the damn video, I don't care if you subscribe or not. Because honestly, my analytics of views mean more to me than whoever likes the channel. So I got that going for me at least. But it's Friday, it's tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. I hope y'all have a great weekend. I hope the weather holds out and it stays kind of cool. So y'all can do the shit that you need to do without being out in the heat. That's always a plus. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do this weekend for a project for the channel. But I mean, I have a list of things that I can do. So yeah i i'm probably gonna recone the sub in the wife's blazer that sounds like a plan but anyway guys thank y'all for watching this shit hope y'all have a great weekend peace out guys and as always base the hell on <laughs>